My name is John Horn. If you don't know me, I'm the Director of Recreational Sports. I'm going to go into what I hope to be a somewhat brief presentation, an overview of the master plan, why we're showing you the master plan, what the results indicate. We certainly want to be able to keep moving this master plan forward, especially considering that tonight SSFC, the Student Service Finance Committee of the, the student government on campus, unanimously approved our referendum to appear on the student ballot March 3rd through the 5th. We can assure you that at this point, if it will come up, that we are being far outclassed in most of the university campuses that we are compared to. And I'm going to start at the beginning so you understand why we're standing in front of you. Dating back years, the Division of Recreational Sports on the campus has known that our infrastructure within our facilities was beginning to deteriorate. In most cases, across our facility, over the last several years, there has been major infrastructural and repair components to our facilities that is continue to compound one on top of the other and now all of our facilities are past their lifespan and we're at the point where over a year ago we came to the students and we said we're being told now by the campus and the state that we have several what are called capital repair and maintenance projects across all of our division all four facilities that we manage the surf the nap nielsen tennis stadium and the shell those repairs total in the tens of millions to the point that every year for the next several years we are going to have to go and ask for segregated fee increases on a large incremental basis every single year in order to fund all of these projects. So we asked the students, we said we can do this or we can consider a master plan and we can take a broad scope and a look at this division and find out what the opportunities are, what those costs might be and find out what you want to do and you can answer that question. Do you want to pay for failing infrastructure? And when I say capital repair and maintenance, I want to be really clear that everybody understands that. That's no service improvement. That's no space expansion. That's nothing programmatically for the students or faculty staff members on this campus. It's replacing roofs, electrical systems, elevators, plumbing, heating, ventilation, air conditioning, of which we don't have much to start with within our facilities anyway, which everybody knows. It's all of those types of projects that you won't even necessarily recognize and were in the existing facilities. The SURF is our newest facility. It was opened in 1983. We're talking a 1968 facility in Nielsen Tennis Stadium. We're talking a 1964 facility in the Natatorium. We're talking a 1956 facility in the Shell. All of them are past their life expectancy. So the students said, we would like to fund the opportunity for you to go forward with a master plan bring us back information and that's what we've done. And this master plan at this point I would tell you is about 95% complete. We're getting final renderings that as much as we would love to show you them right now, because we do have several of them, they're incomplete, but they look fantastic. And we're gonna save that until after the new year when you come back and we'll show you again and a lot of other engagement opportunities. But what we are gonna show you tonight is what we've been able to produce and the results as we come back, as well as a little history and some knowledge about why recreational sports is important on university campuses. So that's what I'm gonna jump into right now. So if you don't use our programs and our facilities, you need to know that we had over 1.7 million uses this year. That's a significant number because it's the most we've ever had, and we did it without expanding any space. We're finding really unique ways to pack people into spaces they shouldn't be in for the type of activity that they're doing. If anybody's spun in here, you're spinning in racquetball courts. If anybody's personal trained in here, you're doing it in racquetball courts. If anybody's used to playing indoor soccer in actual indoor soccer facilities, you're doing it in a basketball court. We have rugby players practicing in our gym, softball, baseball. We've got all sorts of unintended uses in our facilities, but we're well over 1.7 million uses. So programmatically, when we talk about improving the UW-Madison and improving the experience of all of you on this campus, we're doing a couple of things, and I think that we're providing those high quality programs, and we're providing those high quality services that proof is in all of our participation numbers, but we are failing, and we are failing at a pretty miserable state right now in terms of providing this campus what it deserves in terms of its facilities. So when you take a look at that mission statement right there, we're achieving two of our three goals, but we have to admit that we are failing this campus in terms of the facility conditions at this time. By the numbers, 83%, that's unique students enrolled across all students on this campus used our programs or facilities last year. It's a huge number, it's the vast majority of this campus. 18% of the faculty staff, that number right there should be much higher. And we can show you in previous surveys that students and faculty staff, the 17% of students that don't use us, and the 82% of the faculty staff that don't use us, many of them say, it's just too crowded. 
I can't get my workout in, I can't get my fitness, my wellness program going, so I pay to other places right around downtown Madison instead of using you when sometimes it's even included in your student fees for you to come in and swipe your ID. So our current challenges, as we said, we've got some outdated and overcrowded facilities. From the time period of about four o'clock today, if you walked over to the surf right now, every piece of our equipment is being used upstairs, okay? And people know that from being in our facilities at peak hours that they wait sometimes up to an hour to get out a piece of equipment. I talked about the extensive repairs that we need. We're talking significant contributions, significant increases to your seg fees, regardless if we do this plan or not. And we've been very intentional and transparent in our conversations with the student government, the Student Service Finance Committee, in showing that. If we do not pass a referendum for new facilities in March, we will be moving forward with approximately $3.5 million in requests for next year alone. And that's followed by another couple of million, and another couple of million, and it's going to keep on that path for several years down the road. Certainly we're turning away informal recreation participants, there's just not enough space. People don't have enough space to work out, they're waiting to play basketball, volleyball, badminton, we just don't have enough space. Over 80% of our reservation requests, I've got Sam who's scheduling our events back there and she could talk to you about how many requests we get and how many we can actually accommodate. That's sport clubs, that's the 800 plus student organizations, that's community outreach that we just could not serve within our division. And we are well below the national standard for quality and space and I'm just going to quantify one of those standards. I'm going to quantify our fitness one, but we're ac across our entire division. If you take a look at fitness, <coughs> outdoor field space, court space, indoor track, pool space, multi-purpose room space, we do not meet any standard on this campus. If you take a look at our National Association or the American College of Sports Medicine standards, for recreation and fitness, we do not meet any standards. So I'm gonna define one of them. We've got less than 15,000 total square feet of fitness space on this campus. Everybody in this room should have one and a half square feet of fitness space to use on this campus if you're an eligible user. We've got almost 100,000 eligible users when you take into consideration students, staff, spouse, domestic partners, hospital, general public members. We've got 100,000 eligible users to our facilities. We're 85,000 square feet short. And you can see how we're stacking up against the Big Ten. And it's a pretty sad story at this point. We did a survey that uh, gathered almost 3,000 comments. We're going to do some more um, engagement through surveys with the students in the spring. These are actual comments that students said time and time again. We're a joke in terms of our facilities. I joined an off-campus gym because I don't like the campus gyms. Madison's a great school full of opportunities. The only downfall is the rec centers. I'm a senior and I'll never get to use these new changes to come, but I hope for the sake of future students that great changes will be made. So in 2013, I told you the Student Service Finance Committee heard these issues with us and they said, we would rather you take a look at this master plan, see what you could do about kicking the can down the road a little longer with these capital maintenance and repair projects and bring us back a master plan and that's what we've done. The goals of the project, we had several. As you look at these, we of course wanted to increase our indoor and outdoor recreational space. We definitely want to expand our programming. We are not serving the program needs. We're turning away 50 flag football teams. Um, we turn away group fitness participants from participating in our programs. It's all across our program areas. We're not meeting the programming demand. We need to expand. We have to be responsible with student money. We understand that. We understand that this is a big ask of students. Um, they're going to do the heavy lifting in this. We've never denied that. It's something that we're trying to show the students and keep them educated as to what the options are and that there's better out there for them. We want to demonstrate responsible stewardship of students' money. Frankly, I will tell you that I don't know of a group on campus that's been more responsible with student money than the Division of Recreational Sports, almost to a fault. We have to look at ourselves a little bit over our history as to why our facilities are in the condition that they're in. And that's just being completely transparent. We were incredibly conservative in the 70s, 80s, and 90s, and it's caught up. And we're trying to make a decision that's going to help the students at this point and let them make the decision for themselves about what they want to support. We certainly have a responsibility to serve the campus population and the campus demand. We can do that to a regard within our programs and services because of their, they're of a very high quality. But we are not doing that in terms of our space and our facilities. So the CERF, it doesn't show up real good on this, but this is our two-toned hardwood basketball court. <coughs> People waiting up in the CERF gymnasiums. So the master plan by the numbers to give you an idea of what we've got. 
in the surf, there's three times more fitness space than there currently exists in the total facility. That takes the weight room, the cardio room, the strength training room, multiply it times three. That's what we've achieved in the master plan. Nine regulation basketball, volleyball, badminton courts. The surf users that use the courts know what I'm talking about when I say regulation. We have four regulation gyms in the surf right now, and then we have four teeny tiny basketball courts that nobody wants to play basketball in because it takes about three dribbles to get up and down the court. So they don't want to use them. We've got nine regulation courts in this plan. We've got nine multi-purpose rooms. Lori, how many do we have now? One, thank you. We've got six racquetball courts that we're incorporating into it. We've got seven laps to a mile. Right now, does anybody know how many laps it is to a mile up there for the joggers? Yeah, it's about 35. You feel like you're dizzy when you <laughs> We got one wellness suite. I talked about that wellness program. We put it in the surf, we put it in the nap, we put it in Nielsen Tennis Stadium. You can go to any one of our facilities and be exposed to wellness programs. You will not be turned away. It might look something like this. This is not designed, so I want to get everybody straight on that. We have not designed any facilities. We've looked at the sites with architects and engineers and said, this is what you could do. We can't even go to design until we pass a referendum, we get by approvals with Chancellor Blank and the Board of Regents and the state, then we go through a bid process, we hire an architect and engineer, and then we design. So this is just an idea of what it might look like, but what I point out is that the aesthetics are a little bit different than the concrete tomb that students refer to the survey. So, a couple of big changes. The entrance comes off at East Campus Mall. Makes sense, right? You can come into a free zone. You don't have to stand outside in the middle of the facility. You come in, you've got the existing pool. You've got an administration suite. We've taken this side and bumped the locker rooms down. So there's actually a little more free zone space on that site. All the racquetball courts in the basement become expanded multi-purpose rooms to serve student organizations, group fitness classes, sport clubs, socials, meetings. I can't tell you the number of requests that we get, and frankly, students stop asking because they're just like, I know that the surf and the natter, and they say, no, they don't have any space. We have totally addressed that throughout this master plan with this amount of square footage, incorporating six racquetball courts back in. Everywhere that you see in our master plan up here in these Lego blocks, green is fitness space. All right, that's 25,000 square feet of fitness space. That's three times the amount that exists currently in the surf. That seven lap to a mile track, it's a little bit bigger, not much, but a little bit, you won't be as dizzy. And then what we're calling the nine pack of gyms. And there's a couple of things that we just wanted to demonstrate in the plan about what we could do if students say, hey, that type of idea rocks, we want you to do that. They're called multi-activity courts, and you're gonna see them in just a little bit about what we're talking about with those. So this might be what the entry area looks like off the East Campus Mall, no more entering down here in the middle of Dayton Street. The idea with national standards and architecture is that you open up the building, you can see all the levels inside and out, whether you're inside the building or you're outside the building walking by. So that kind of gives you this idea of over that lobby area, you can see a significant fitness portion, cardio balcony, lots of open space to move around. It will not be packed in shoulder to shoulder like it is now. That multi-activity court that I was talking about is right up here. You'll notice it looks like an ice rink, right? Well, it's not. It's dasher boards that are like ice rinks around a hardwood or a multi-purpose court. So you can still play basketball, volleyball, or badminton in these things. But now you can also do floor hockey. You can do dodgeball, baseball, softball batting cages, golf cages, indoor soccer. You expand all of your opportunities in a space like this. All of a sudden, you can do three opportunities. So now you can do 12 to 15 different sports in that one facility. These are the types of facilities that other Big Ten institutions have. I mean, wide open spaces, 10 basketball courts all on one level for all of their programming. That's Illinois, uh, you, Indiana. This is our multi-purpose room at the Natatorium. I don't know if anybody's used this, but yes, that is tape. <laughs> we tape the floor so you don't cut your feet on the split seams of the hardwood over at our one multi-purpose studio over at the Natatorium. That's our gymnasium, and you can't see it real well, but this is the sideline. I don't know if any basketball players have played over there, but everybody's used to running into the hardwood panels up in the natatorium gymnasiums. So the natatorium master plan by the numbers. Yes, that's accurate. 12 times more cardio space. Why so much more than the surf? Well, it's a lot smaller at the nat, first of all, but the footprint that we can gather at the nat site compared to anywhere else, that's where we're going to get that square footage to get to the national standard. <laughs> Three times more strength training space, six multi-purpose rooms instead of the one we were talking about, 12 regulation basketball courts. 
Four and a half laps to a mile. Now we're getting to where people want to be jogging, right? Four and a half laps. Six racquetball courts, one recreational instructional pool, an ice rink, an indoor turf field. It's a concept that's being used everywhere in the country, especially in cold weather climates where we've got six months of winter. Bring our outdoor programs and put them inside. So now we can keep programming throughout the winter. And then of course that wellness program that I spoke about. This could be your new natatorium in our master plan. Sustainability throughout all of our project is a huge emphasis. This is not a rooftop turf field as much as Mike Warren would like it to be. This is a green roof in order to take care of the storm retention so we're not flooding the side streets and Willow Creek and those types of things. These are solar panels so that we can incorporate solar panel energy into our facility to take power out of the grid. Um, to give you an idea about the concepts over here, this is the academic portion, kinesiology, school of education, occupational therapy, an entire free zone hooking up with the Joke Residence Hall right here, the main entrances. And then this component over here is all recreation space for students, faculty, staff, members, spouse, domestic partners, guests, and general public. There's some big footprints within this facility, the indoor turf facility, ice arena, a new aquatic facility for lap swimming and instructional programs for us, multi-purpose rooms throughout. Everything that you see in gold is this educational component and that wellness program that we talked about. Instead of coming into our facility to scan your ID right here, which is the idea, you can just come into the facility from the street or from a bus and you can go right into the wellness suite and you can be serviced in there. The green areas, again, that I point out, significant, almost 30,000 square feet of fitness space, cardio and selectorized space on one level. That 12-pack of gymnasiums, again, with those multi-activity courts that we talked about. This could be the entrance, an idea for it, over at the new natatorium. Cardio balcony overlooking that, so again, you see the activity inside and outside. It brings the facility to life. Looks like a place you want to be. A uh, possible aquatic program with an actual ramp to get into the pool for people with accessibility needs, which we do not have right now. We have to use lifts to get them into our pools. And this is our 12-pack of gymnasiums with that significant jogging track component that does not exist right now on the Lakeshore side of campus. Again, we can do all sorts of different activities within those multi-activity courts. And of course the ice rink and that indoor turf component. This is Iowa's indoor turf. This gives you an idea of, uh, I think that's Ohio State, accurate? Minnesota. Minnesota. And then this is the idea of a dedicated studio for spinning. We don't do them in ra racquetball courts, that's not normal. So if you're a spinner, it's not normal for you to be in a racquetball court. So our outdoor field component in our master plan, this is just trying to depict that there's really brown grass, there's no lights, there's no dedicated field. We kind of just set up goals, we paint lines, and off we go. This is the Near East play field. This is our newest competition play field right in front of Dijok Residence Hall after a rain. After this particular rainfall, we did not play for two days on these fields and we had sunny and 60 the next two days. Telling students that they can't play when it's sunny and 60 on our fields is not a good thing. Outdoor fields by the numbers. What we want to do is we want to add a lighted component out to University Bay. We're already lit at Near West and Near East. We have actually three significant synthetic turf components planned at Near East, Near West, and University Bay that could provide up to 13 synthetic turf fields for activity. Instead of four flag football fields, for all of you flag football players, we can go to five now. Five soccer fields at Near East, including a championship field, which we'll show you how we were able to carve that out. Two softball and a baseball field for our sport clubs and our intramural sports programs. Two men's and women's lacrosse and rugby fields. Two men's and women's soccer and ultimate frisbee fields for our sport clubs. Two shelters in which we can house equipment, do concessions, um, provide more service to the students out at the University Bay site. And then incorporating a one and a half mile parkour fitness station that ties into kind of the picnic point university trail on that lakeshore side of campus is what we've designed in there. So if you don't know where you're at looking at this particular space, this is the idea for Near West. Synthetic turfing this entire site, and instead of going east-west, which is what we normally do, we can fit in five fields going north-south now, plus overlaying what it, it could be a soccer field, ultimate frisbee, rugby, whatever we want to do, and do a championship venue at that site. We've already got lighting on the site, so we don't have to do much with the lighting. We just uh, are planning to do synthetic turf on this site. 
The Near East fields, you can see our architects are doing a good job of starting to fill in the concept of the new NAD into these renderings. That's why we're not 100% done, we're very close. But four soccer fields running north-south, again, with that competition or championship field venue, captive audience right in front of Dijoppe Residence Hall, you can take your lacrosse programs, your rugby programs, yeah. ultimate frisbee programs and have a championship night or do intramural sports championships out there. That's the concept there. And then the university base site, this is north of the hospital. This is the existing athletics practice field. That doesn't change at all, but we've added this kind of pedestrian spine with some additional parking between two facilities out here. And we've got this pinwheel shape of softball fields with a baseball field to accommodate both our sport club programs and our baseball club that operates. The pinwheel and all of this is natural grass because there is a 100-year floodplain that runs through this site. So we were respectful of that floodplain to make sure that we, we didn't put anything in there with that. Of course, a significant component to this is to add some lighting to it. So instead of stopping our programs or trying to run programs at 4.30, and we have a bunch of forfeits because students can't make it when it gets dark, we can expand to 5.30, 6.30, 7.30. It completely changes the ball game for us in terms of what we can offer the students and we can meet that demand. This is Ohio State, same exact concept. Lit play fields on synthetic turf. Minnesota, and then jumping into the Nielsen Tennis Stadium, which is our last component. The idea here is to add an addition onto the front of Nielsen Tennis Stadium with a significant fitness component, two multi-purpose rooms to bring that building to life with programming. The green, again, shows you the significant fitness, a ground floor area, which would likely be strength and free weight equipment, followed by a significant cardio balcony up top multi-purpose rooms, maybe a personal training studio with some wellness services once again. Wellness throughout our entire master plan. And this is something that it might look like should this master plan move forward. So let's talk a little bit of dollars. What students can expect to pay for new facilities? Right now, so everybody knows, you pay $36.78 through your student tuition. How many people really knew that other than the SSFC members? <laughs> <laughs> All right. $36.78, it's the lowest in the Big Ten of seg fee paying Big Ten schools, of which almost every one of them are. The average is $145 a semester. Okay, so when we talked about the disparity between our facilities and theirs, there's where it's at. So phasing, and I'll talk a little bit about costs and what we've communicated to the student government with transparency in mind. So the phasing, again, this takes a while. We gotta pass a referendum before we even do anything. If we don't pass a referendum, this goes nowhere. We pass a referendum, we go through approvals with the Chancellor and the Board of Regents and the state, and then we start that design process. And design would be slated to start in 2015, fiscal year, actually 2016, you start July 1st of 2015. So the SURF and maybe the Near West programs would open up first. SURF in 2019, the Near West Synthetic Turf is a much smaller project, so we might be able to start servicing the students a lot sooner on that site, um, just because of the timeline. We're not going to take down both facilities because we still have to serve a campus population, right? So then once the CERT opens, we would then open up the natatorium. Near East would serve as that staging site, so it would be ready to go. And then it would go under construction as soon as the nat opened and all the staging equipment got off that site. Nielsen Tennis Stadium and U Bay Fields could go at any time because we are not even asking the students to provide funding for those programs. We're hoping to have donors and gifts offered for those programs, and we do have some interested parties at this time. So what are we bringing in? There's a master plan, which I've just showed you. This is the six components of the master plan. The referendum is different. The referendum takes into consideration the math of what we're trying to ask the students to support, what we think we can get in gifts, what we should bring forward to referendum. So the CERT, the Natatorium, the Near West Fields, and the Near East Fields are in the referendum at this time. That could change before March. But as of right now, we have told the students and listened to students who have said, we definitely want to vote on surf mat near west and near east fields. They'll be in those March 3rd to 5th elections unless something changes between now and then. Again, we are not bringing University Bay Fields and Nielsen Tennis Stadium. The ballot language at this time reads that students will not pay a maximum increase on their segregated fee of more than $108. Okay, that would be if we fall flat on our face and get no money, from donations, we get no funding support from the foundation of the campus or anything. We strongly feel that that funding support will be there. 
So we think 108 is the worst that we're talking about. So what can you do? Well, you can stay educated. That means you can attend these types of sessions. You can ask us to come present for your student organization, for your department, for any groups that you would like us to present to, and we will do that. We've got a blog up and running. We're doing everything we can to try to keep students updated on a daily and weekly basis. So you can find information at any time. One of the things that we are absolutely intentional about doing, and we are attempting to do, but we can't guarantee it at this point, is that we don't want to increase the segregated fees on the students until amenity starts being used. So when that surf gets built, the door is open, the seg fee gets implemented. So students won't be asked to pay until those doors open. Now that's something we're trying to do. I can't tell you for sure because we're waiting for the bond rates. We're waiting for the cash on hand that we're going to have from gifts and donors. And we won't know that until before March 3rd through the 5th, but we will certainly educate the campus about that should that happen. So there's the email address if you want to jot it down and get involved with Badgers for Recreational Reform. Certainly follow us on social media. If you've been looking for information, like I don't know much about this, about what you're talking about, it's all over our social media, it's all over our blog, it's all over our website. Or contact us and we'll be happy to contact you. Bring your friends. we got to have word of mouth about this. That's very strong. In the days of technology and people being buried in their phones and stuff, still telling people and pulling them to these sessions that you hear about is a really big thing for us. And then, of course, third through the fifth, we're going to be voting. And this comment right here, I think, says it all about what we're trying to do. We're trying to undo the mistakes of the past with our facilities. And we're trying to build for the next 40 to 50 years on this campus. And we're listening to students as we do it. And we're trying to build on the new. There's a lot of new ideas, a lot of new concepts in this plan. And we understand what we're asking the student body to do. Don't think for a second that the Division of Recreational Sports or myself don't understand the ask that we're making right now of students. But if we do this, and we do this right, for the next 40 to 50 years of Badger students, they're going to enjoy this so much more than you guys were able to. And I'm sorry to say that, but that's just a plain fact. We'll be able to service them so much better.